had a dream that I was somewhere and I kept trying to talk to Jardway and he just kept like looking at me and then turning around. That's a nightmare. It, it That's was very a real, yeah. And I was like thinking like, whoa, like I thought we'd be friends when we met. <laughs> But what's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> I'm great. <How laughs> now that we've you? gotten the, the water drop noises out of the way. Yeah. What's the science behind the, the reason that it sounds like For a this? Water... Yeah. I don't know. Something with the air. That sounds crazy. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's my main talent. New song out today. Yep. And, what uh, do I do? But I am just eager and excited to kind of pick your brain about your life, your music, your career. Please do. Uh, give me a kind of a rundown on Goody to where we got to where we are today. I know you're from Canada. Yep. Selkirk, Manitoba. And you, you've been, music, it seems like, has been in your blood for your entire life. Like, I saw the old video of you, the cutest video of you getting, like, a little karaoke machine. Oh, wow, when yeah. When you were, like, like two or three uh -huh. years old or something. Damn, you did your research. It's a karaoke one, just like you wanted. <laughs> so it definitely seems like... Have you like seen the kid video? You see the shithead one where I'm screaming at my mom? I can swear, right? Oh, yeah, 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 you can swear, and I have. You're a little demon child, but it seems like you had a supportive family the whole time, though, about your music endeavors. I started playing guitar when I was, like, four. Um, yeah, that's all I did. I could, I could like, play guitar before I could really, like, talk properly, um, which is sweet because it's kind of just, like, second nature now. So, um, yeah, I played guitar my whole life. Um, I'm from, it's called Selkirk, Manitoba. It's, like, uh, right above North Dakota. Um cold as hell a super small town like 8,000 people um so there wasn't much to do it was so cold I just kind of like read books and played guitar and listened to music and stuff so super grateful then when I was around like 10 years old um my mom got me a laptop for Christmas and I started making beats and stuff in garage band and then I was just kind of like making music with all my friends for fun as like a joke and also like getting better at it mm -hmm. you know as i was just messing around so but yeah it's always been a big part of my life in in the scumbag music video was there a clip of you was that your old high school yeah Happens every time. Cause that was sick because i saw the name of the it the kids it. are biking and stuff so you went home to, to get some shots for that yeah so i wanted to do the whole video in my hometown but that was when travis barker wasn't like flying so we shot um the scenes with blink at like a uh, garage in the valley um that we put like leaves and stuff to kind of make it look more midwestern and um then we just kind of movie magicked it to make it look like they're in my hometown. The whole video is in my hometown, aside from the garage scenes with Blink. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. That, that actually makes it special. And that must have been a full circle moment because yeah. you were a Blink kid growing up. Hell yeah. And w how did you do the flying shots in that? I was like hooked up to uh, a harness floating. Was it actually through the street? Like it wasn't green screened or anything? No. Like it was actually you just going No, the there streets? were like people like from my hometown like out like looking because we kind of like blocked off the roads. Like, but it hurt. I had like... I mean, I wore like, extremely tight jeans, but under to the club, underneath <sighs> my jeans and jacket, like I was like in like a, I had, I, yeah, I was actually floating. Mm -hmm. There's a BTS video on my YouTube. It, it hurt like hell. I had like bruises after, and and then they just CGI'd out the cord. You okay, know? as I'm I'm looking at your neck and I see the the bat tattoo behind your ear. Do you have a shape uh, shape of water tattoo on your? I arm? do. That he has a shape of water tattoo, Tommy, and it's so sick because we're big, huge film lovers here. Yeah. So, are you a Guillermo del Toro fan? Of course. That is so sick. So when that movie came out, I'm like, if I like something, I really like it, like movies or songs. So I saw the Shape of Water eight days in a row in theaters. No way. And I took everyone. I took like my girlfriend at the time, my manager, my friends, and everyone was like, it's all right. And I was like, no, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> and then on the ninth day. I got this tat. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've seen this thing enough. It's a part of me for good. Let's yeah. just put this thing on my body. It's cool, though, man. The, uh, Doug Jones is the name of the guy in the suit, um, the alien. Yeah. And he's in um, Pan's Labyrinth. He's the guy. Oh, with they got the eyes on his hands. And, and the fawn thing. Oh, he's both characters in <clears throat> Yeah, he's also in Hellboy. He's kind of just like the go-to Guy to creature. put in weird stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, 
I haven't talked to him in a long time, but we used to DM a lot. Oh, you actually chatted yeah, with him? He reached out. Yeah, That's a couple sick. of people from the movie have. I mean, this it ended up winning Best Picture, but yeah. this was like, I got this tat like two weeks within it being out. Most people get like classic movie tattoos. It's like a practice. <laughs> You're just getting movie. the new stuff <laughs> yeah. right when you see it. But dude, Del Toro, he's a legend. Yeah. I, I love that guy. And I saw just above that tattoo, you had a three cheers. I do. First band I ever saw in concert was Mike Kim opening for The Used in 2004. And they are my second favorite band to blink is My Chemical Romance. Same. This is actually the only color I have is on this. It's red. And then I also have red um, back here. I have the cover, the smiley face from the book Watchmen. Oh, nice. Um, a little blood drop. Yeah, That's well, this is also blood. So the only color I have is red for blood. But uh, crazy full circle moment is um, I lis I read Watchmen when I was like a kid or I got it because I was so obsessed with my camp and Jared Way would like talk about it in interviews. And then when the Watchmen movie came out, um, the intro of the movie... Is a Bob Dylan song, Times Are Changing. I know you love Bob Dylan. Well, yeah, but that's how I heard of Bob Dylan. Really? Yeah, so if I never liked my chem and never got the Watchmen book and then didn't go see the movie, I probably wouldn't have heard Bob Dylan, which is why I started playing acoustic guitar. That's sick. And you, you really shine, I feel like, on acoustic guitar. Because like, you, yeah. you introduce like from trap beats to pop punk electric riffs. Like, you have a big variety in your yeah. catalog, but it seems that you shine on the acoustic guitar. Yeah, like I said, it's just like second nature. I'm so happy I learned young because, like, I don't even, it's like, yeah, I'm so thankful that I'm not good at a lot of things, but I'm pretty good at finger picking. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the new song, you just, as of today, today you dropped the new track. Today. What do I do? What do I do when the drugs aren't working anymore? Well, I've never heard someone say, what do I do? Or what do I do? I, it's like anytime me and my manager and my friends, we all like so emphasis like, what do I do? What do I do? Yeah, like it's strange. I think, I don't know if it's because of how I talk. People like, like have they said it like it back me. back to you? Yeah. <laughs> but what do I do is cool. But hit me with the song. You know, it's been a minute since you dropped new music yeah. and that's got to be pretty exciting. And I love the, I love the guitar in it right away. For me, it was like reminiscent almost like of a Green Day inspiration wow. or something behind it. But it was just a fun track that I thought was dope. It's so funny you say that because we were saying um, before the camera was on, that was on the Guns show yesterday. And, shout uh, out to Guns. Shout out Guns. And I was saying how like <clears throat> I, uh, I had started the beat because um, my manager works with an uh, artist from Nigeria called Burna Boy who's super, super sick, and um, we have a song together. Everyone's in danger, riding with the pain, cause it's crazy where we came from. Hatred and anger, niggas on the back block, with a hundred laptops and a couple bank cards. Nigga, that's that scam art. I, I produce and write for like a lot of other people and, and stuff, and really like doing that as well. So it started as a beat for him. Um, so that's why the drums are like in the way they are and kind of the groove a bit. And then I added the acoustic, um, but I'm really into like uh, Vampire Weekend, nice. and yeah, they're like one of my favorites. And um, Paul Simon, especially the album Graceland, yeah, which was kind of the main inspiration for What Do I Do. But that was like when I first, because there's a lot of like that that type of feel and drum patterns mixed with acoustic guitar on the album Graceland. Um, so when I made that, I wasn't anticipating like singing on it. It was just a beat. Then I was like, I, I really wanted to try something. So I kind of purposely, um, approached it in a way, like one of my favorite bands, the Smiths, the, a lot of the songs are, um, you know, sound really happy, but the lyrics are Depressing pretty emo. And yeah. emo as hell. So I purposely wanted to do that. I was in my hometown with my friends and I was like, and intentionally, making the lyrics as emo as i could because it was such a like sunshiny happy summery yeah instrumental um so what's funny is after in my mind i was like oh this is like a paul simon influence kind of vampire weekend and it's funny i was saying with guns it's like you can't really um decide what people 
would think it's like well, how, they how you say green day yeah, yeah because i played it for people thinking that it's like paul simon influence and people are like this reminds me of like sugar ray or like <laughs> counting crows and i was like what i guess everyone has their own yeah and then after i was like whoa kind of yeah and the riffs also it's on an acoustic guitar but it's a super kind of blinky riff yeah it's you very know? blinky yeah. and I, I saw a couple months back when you first posted the riff on tiktok mm -hmm. and it was cool to see the song that followed from that <laughs> Yeah. So I just thought it was a cool full circle It was cool thing too because I feel like, thank you, when I posted that, um, people didn't really know that that's how like the drum pattern would come in, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of, I'm always trying to push boundaries and, um, you know, touch on, I love all kinds of music, like n none more than the others. So I always like to push boundaries and just try things I haven't done before. And um, I think this is a cool like first song back after not releasing stuff for a while. Hit me about the music video for it. Sat down and cried to myself, I'm alright. This whiskey's been tasting like teardrops on ice. I am incredibly inspired. My, like, favorite thing ever, aside from The Simpsons, is uh, The Twilight Zone, um, the original, and Twin Peaks. Those three shows are, like, inspired me in life just as much as any music, um, musical act. The Twilight Zone specifically, um is like I've always kind of copied and for the two shots, so the artwork of that and the music video is inspired by Twin Peaks. Um, there's an actor, Kyle McLaughlin, he plays Agent Dale Cooper, and there's a room called the Black Lodge, which is like a red room, that, that's what the two shots video is based off. Um, and it's so cool where, you know, music and art can take you because uh, he now like follows me and is a good friend of mine. That's right. The star of Twin Peaks, just because of, of that. and. Um, you know, I met him and showed him like the. I met him at a restaurant and just was like, "Look, like the plaque is my first plaque I gave my grandma. Like it was so sick." And then like three days later, I saw him at a red light. Small and we world. Were, like, Whoa. Yeah, and then I messaged him and it was crazy. And yeah, I'm like one of the only people he follows. It's insane. So like, I did the Twin Peaks thing and love that. And I'm always influenced by David Lynch and stuff. And but um, mm, one of the greats, the best. Yeah, and. uh for the Nostalgia Kills videos, those were um, super inspired by Twilight Zone and kind of leaning in. But then, you know, my, my album that I'm making right now, including the What Do I Do video, is uh, <laughs> is super inspired by Twilight Zone. So it's it's black and white, you know, reminiscent of a Twilight Zone really episode. really classic Twilight Zones. Yeah, that's my favorite. I have it on every day when I'm making music, just on loop. I've seen the whole series like 50 times. It's also um, super reminiscent of Bauhaus videos and stuff and I just always like to pay homage in my music videos and you know play on different aesthetics and references and stuff so seeing as the song is so light and summery as I said I made the lyrics emotional and dark um the videos super dark as well <laughs> so and the only light thing about that song is the instruments but then when you break it down everything else is pretty dark were you a Black Mirror fan at all yeah. Yeah, I love Black Mirror. They just announced a new season. I, I love the classic Twilight episodes. I've seen them all so many times, too. It's the best. I wasn't the biggest fan of the new ones, though. No. But I I th would recommend, though, if you haven't seen Severance. I know. Uh, someone. Yeah. Oh, my God. I it have is, to check it. I won't t uh, if you don't know Dude, anything about it, about it, I don't want you to know a thing about it. Tommy just kicked it off. I was like, ref anyone who brought it up near him, I was like, don't tell him the plot. Just let him watch it. Okay. But if you're a Twilight Zone kind of mindfuck kind of person, oh, okay, yeah. you need to check it out. It is so good. And is this signaling, is it going to be attached to any larger releases, an EP, an yeah. album? Do you know yet? Yeah, I guess album. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't put out an album yet, but sounds silly to say. Because I've been a musician for like 10 years. <laughs> you put out a big body of work. Yeah, I've, I've put out a mixtape, EPs, this, that. So, yeah, the project. It's coming. Yeah. And Almost done. This this will be the first song off it, yeah. I've just kind of been like, I've made so many songs to get to, like, I probably made like 250 songs, no exaggeration, until I got to the point of being like, cool, now I want to like really buckle in. Mm -hmm. um, so it just took a long time. Like I said, I, I have so many different influences and so much you know i like making so many different kinds of music and um and i produce most of um my music even if uh sometimes i'll take it to someone else to like help finish or whatever but 
mostly everything starts just in my laptop and so there's so much like possibilities and um it, it sometimes it wasn't tough for me it was just really finding the voice and finding what direction and you know what i really stand behind so what do i do is like the first um glimpse of you know what's to come mm -hmm. and and not everything sounds like that there's still diversity but i really just found myself in a really good groove the past six months and um i'm almost done it all now that's exciting though i'll probably be done in like two weeks oh really so like just about truly done like yeah. you're, you're really getting there yeah i was like all i do is make music i woke up at like eight and recorded a whole song today actually do you just dream up ideas like will an idea come to you or you will wake up with an idea in your head or what, what's the process like for you <coughs> from coming up with a concept to executing it and having a song yeah i think like i don't know it's a pretty like out of body thing especially like lyrics and stuff i i i never ever like sit and write lyrics anytime i've tried to do that when i go to record the song i usually don't like it i think it's maybe like I thought too hard or something. It's a little forced, maybe? Yeah, I think when I'm, like, especially if I'm writing with, like, a pen, I just, like, try to get, like, too poetic or something, and it's just, like, pretentious, and I'm like, shut up. That's not me. Yeah, so I like to write, like, on the mic. So I'll, I'll just usually make the track and then sit there and, uh, yeah, kind of, like, freestyle. Um, yeah, it makes it get so it. much more organic, I think. It makes it organic. It makes it relevant. It makes it, like, whatever I'm feeling in that very moment which then usually lasts um because like the energy was attached to it you know um which is important to me yeah i think it's just about the energy like what do i do you know that that instrumental i made and like i started that the first draft of that beat was probably like 2019 oh so it's been in the works the idea at least yeah. the, the basics of it have and been not the, the lyrics or anything it. but it's just you know when when you love something it you don't forget about it like that so yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I made a whole song before I got here. I'll go back to the studio after. I just, I love it. That's I have sick. to. Yeah, I have to. It's like an itch I can't scratch. No, that's your thing. That's yeah. your outlet. That's who you are. And <coughs> the world's starting to open back up after being shut down. And dude, I saw the videos of you uh, playing with Lost Kings. Yeah. Out in Coachella with Lala, nothing but a sea of people. <laughs> you guys did the track, Me, Myself, and Adderall. Yeah. What was that like hitting that stage? Because it was literally, it looked like 10 billion people were just out there. Yeah, Lala was crazy. Um, we had like pyro and stuff. I saw the flames and stuff shooting yeah. up. That was we, so didn't, we didn't have Pyro at Coachella, but it was just cool to um, be at Coachella. I played Lala um, myself back in 2017, but um, it was great to be back. But I'd never been on stage at Coachella, so that was really, really cool. And it was also awesome. I... Uh, I had never met those guys till early last year, and they just reached out um, for me to do the song. So I didn't know that it would become, you know, what it is, and people really like that song, and they've invited me to perform it, and I can't wait to get back on the road. Did your last, you came out with the release not long before the pandemic. Yeah, what happened was Scumbag came out Halloween 2019, my song with Blink. Um, and you played it on Kimmel February just before the pandemic. We played it on Kimmel, like, a week before lockdown. Yeah. Yeah, and it was, like, on... It was doing pretty well on alt radio. Um, I was doing, like, radio shows every day, flying around. It was so cool. It was, like, my first, like... Felt like a rock star moment. And then COVID hit, and it was just stuck in a bedroom. Um, making me, like... It was just such a, like, contrast. It's just a stop. <clears throat> yeah, so I was kind of bummed for a second. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put together a project. So... What you're talking about is um, my mixtape, Don't Forget Where yeah, You Came From. Where you came from. That came out um, February 26, 2021, um, which is funny because that was a year anniversary to the day of when we played Kimmel. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a special date then. You got to get that tattooed on you somewhere. <laughs> 226. Yeah, literally. In Canada, we say 26 2. 26 2, whatever the date is. <laughs> but uh, I, I saw a clip, I think, that you finally, for the first time, got to play 
Nothing Good live with yes. with G Easy. Uh huh. And that w- must have been so nice because you have a lot of features on that mixtape. Yeah. So I was gonna say that like, I was just stuck in um, a house making music, just, like bored, watching movies. Like I watched like every horror movie ever made. I made it like a point to do it in COVID. And, um, <clears throat> I wanted to just. I thought <clears throat> I'm like a a germaphobe. B just like thought the world was ending. Like I was like, this is it. Like I I thought I was never gonna like travel again. Like at peak COVID, like May twenty twenty, like I truly thought it was like done. You look did you live in LA at that time too? Yeah. And so you I mean, you know how crazy that was. The freeways were empty, the stores were empty, the skies were clear. I thought, no, I thought the world was done. It, it was like out of a movie. It was like a horror movie in itself. So I was yeah. Like it was bad. So I had absolutely, like, no idea, like, what life was, what was going on. So I was like, I'm going to put together a project because I don't want to just, like, get completely in the dumps. Um, so I had a few things, like, from the past and uh, that I wanted to finish and a couple, like, features here and there. So I made a point to put, like, a lot of features on. I just wanted to be, like, a cool, eclectic, like, a lot of my friends, a lot of collaboration. Um just like a cool you know that was my first kind of full length project even though it's a mixtape like and i produced most of it um or a good portion of it and yeah it just it meant a lot to me um to the title don't forget where you came from and every feature too uh juicy j's on two songs your boy juicy j yo goody what's up man yeah yeah you know me I can't change your life, do that with a swipe Coldless ice, like what's on my neck Save you like I'm Christ 2 a.m., I'm just pulling up You still look good as fuck T-shirt on, with no makeup on I can't make this up no Blink's on there Travis Barker drums on too um, Bacar, Burna Boy, Cigarettes After Sex So that was just sweet So I just wanted to put something together You know, if if the world was ending I was like this will be my put, last body of I'm work. I want to put together a really when epic thing. Find us year, like yeah, with all with all with now. all my influences and stuff. And um, fortunately, the world didn't end. It didn't. And then you I got put, put out another body of work after and, that. Yeah. So, but that was really cool. Yeah, that that was a fun experience. And um, yeah, I mean that that project means a lot to me. When I started hearing your stuff, I can always hear trap beats and stuff, or almost rap elements in it as well. And growing up, were you listening to any of that kind of stuff, or did it start to be more people that you musicians you found later in life, or where did no. you, you kind of <clears throat> um, sound come from? No, I've always, like I said, I've always loved everything. Like my mom and my grandma, I grew up with them, and they listened to like Johnny Cash and Elvis and Marty Robbins, like old country. Oh, your Johnny Cash cover. Oh, thank you, man. So sick. Black. That was so sick. Thank you. Well, you wonder why I always dress in black. Why you never see black colors on my back. By the way, though, how did it feel to present your grandma with a two shots plaque? <laughs> so that sick. must have been a surreal thing yeah. for your family, who since you were a baby, pretty much with a guitar in your hands, to be yeah. like, check out what I got. That was awesome. That's hanging above her um, her uh, couch. So there's always and, been and music even, diversity, though. Absolutely, yeah. I so then, like I said, I had Adam of the State tape, but then the first CD I ever bought, like went to Walmart and got. I was probably like six or seven. Um, was the documentary by the game. Um, it was just crazy because I was just in the, uh, the studio with him a couple weeks ago, uh, listening to his new album and stuff, and he's he's a huge influence on me. But so I had that CD, and and then um, I don't know. I just always like I would just dive deep because I would go online and just like study back. So then I loved my chem. So then I was like, well, who are these people influenced by? And I would you know, at the same time, getting like obsessed with Bob Dylan and. Um, then through my chem, like, getting into, like, The Cure. Smashing Pumpkins or something. Smashing Pumpkins, The Cure, yeah, Smiths. And, uh... By the way, speaking of The Smiths, did you just see Morrissey? Yeah. And so Bauhaus... It, yeah, it was I saw Bauhaus were opening by that Yes. One. What was that like? I gotta ask really quick, because I've never seen Morrissey live, and knowing that you're such a fan of, like, The Smiths and stuff... Yeah. That must I, have been I surreal. think it was my ninth time seeing him. Oh, so you've seen him live a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. It was really good. I saw the set list from someone a friend and there was like no smith song on it and i was like oh that's cool like I'm, you know still excited 
And then he did How Soon Is Now, like, second song. Oh, nice. So, yeah, and then, like, a bunch. So it was incredible. So at that point, you're like, oh, wait, no yeah. idea what could go, what could happen tonight. Bauhaus is so good as well. And But, no, so I would just always dive back and just, like, online and just, like, studying stuff. And um, I had a – I don't have – I have a really cool uncle um, who, who showed me most of the stuff I like as well um, and got me into a lot of stuff. So um, I was really, really obsessed with The Misfits. Um, around the same time I was getting obsessed with just like horror movies and stuff. So I was probably like nine. And then, uh, I found Three Six Mafia, who Juicy J is, um, was in, or is in. And, uh, then I was like, whoa, this is like Misfits, but hip hop, like it's like, you know, horror, like in music form, which I just thought was so, so cool. So then... I got really obsessed with 3-6, and I always loved, like, Lil Wayne and um, tons of, you know, different rappers, but when I started making beats in GarageBand, I would just import an MP3 of, like, a 3-6 song and then just try and recreate the drums so that I could, like, learn how to do that because I really love the way that those, like, the feel. It's just such a signature feel. So most of my beats are pretty 3-6 influenced, even to this day. Like memories and two shots and anything that's hip hoppy is kind of like three six with like guitars, which is why me and Juicy then became friends because he just thought that was like so cool. It is, and I mean, so many bands that I know, it seems like they're kind of specific to their genre or they're yeah. known for their sound. But that's what's fun about your stuff is that it really is a bit all over the place in the in a cohesive, cool yeah. way. But I just can't. Yeah, there's just I wouldn't be doing like <clears throat> justice to myself if. You were I limiting. Was, and it's funny because, yeah, exactly. And um, luckily, you know, I kind of came out the gate like that. So my fans understand. And it's all still me. You know, um, I saw uh, Danny Elfman play at Coachella. Oh, I saw some of the performances yeah. or some of the videos from that. And that and, was so cool. Yeah, and it was so cool. Me and me and uh, g Easy, we just uh, actually scored a horror movie together. I was going to actually ask you, because I know you like horror movies. I was going to say, is scoring something that yeah, you want to get into? Yeah, I just finished one. That's so rad. My first score, yeah. I think it's going to come out later this year for a horror movie. But Danny Elfman was in, like, Oingo Boingo, the mm -hmm. band. And then as well does solo music, but is also one of the biggest, like, score composers ever. Um, including, like, he, he was the singing voice of Jack Skellington. Yeah. Yeah, wrote all those songs, did the Simpsons theme song, like... Um, which I saw he played that at Coachella yeah he played and I was like that is so dope yeah so that was inspiring to me though because he was like if you don't know who I am like this set might seem like pretty weird but it's all me this is me and I was like that's how I feel with my music too like if I'm just picking the guitar like something more kind of punk or like hip hop like it's still it's still me and it's not me even consciously like when I sit down to make a song I'm not like and now I'm making this you know I, it's not like shape shifty. It's not like and now today's a punk song. Or like it's just kind of what I'm feeling. So well, even with your vocals, you were saying how like you you don't really you can't write it down beforehand and no. really plan it. It's more something that happens in the booth. Yeah, I'm sure that when you're writing, it's just like here's an idea. Oh, this works with it. Oh, that works with Absolutely. this too. Absolutely. And it's it's funny because my music is so like kind of diverse and all over the place. But a lot of the music I love are artists. It's probably because I just admire the like discipline. But I love bands where all this stuff sounds the same. <laughs> so it's like a weird, like, you know, even 3-6. But um, in turn... My buddy Cigarettes <laughs> After Sex, man, they're yeah. amazing. Beach House is like... Beach House is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite bands. And I'll play for some people, and they're like, every song sounds the same. Like, and you're like, I know, isn't it mis great? Misfits, yeah. <laughs> and I, I just... it's some, I don't know why. I think maybe I'm, I'm just a fan of the discipline because I could never have that, <laughs> you know. But it's given you the outlet to kind of put all those inspirations course, together absolutely. and create your own thing with it. Mm -hmm. With the upcoming stuff, a new album, is, are you going to be collabing? Is there any dream collabs you want? Are you going to get Gerard Way on a song? I want to. I hope so. I mean, th there's a couple dream collabs I already have done, actually. I tweeted the other day. I literally had a dream that I, I was somewhere with Gerard Way. I've never met him. Um... Mikey follows me. Oh, he's he's the only guy I've met from MCR. Oh, okay. He's a sweetheart. Yeah, I bet. I've never met any of them. I've also never seen them live. You know. Oh. And I now do, that they're I finally do, back. I know. I'm definitely going to go see them. I do have a, a Black Parade vinyl, though, that's signed by all of them. Oh, really? 
Yeah, sick. man, this sweet, sweet, sweet kid in Chicago. Um, I guess he's not a kid now, but he's been a fan of me for years. His name is Joe. Uh, he he gave me it. And it's signed by the band? Yeah, he's seen me like four times. One time at like the venue, he gave me it. I was like, whoa. Hey, that's a good fan base. Yeah. That's, that's some good support there. But I have it framed, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I get that frame, too. But I, I tweeted, I, I had a dream that I was somewhere, and I kept trying to talk to Jardway, and he just kept, like, looking at me and then turning around. That's a nightmare. It, it that's was very dream. real, yeah, and I was, like, thinking, like, whoa, like, I thought we'd be friends when we <laughs> met. <laughs> but I would love to work with him. What did you think of uh, Foundations of Decay? I track. loved it. Yeah? Yeah. I thought it was an awesome comeback for them. Have you been watching some of the live footage of them from their uh, UK course. tour? Yeah. Oh, it feels so good to see them back. And Gerard, it seems like he's been having the best time with his outfits. Have you seen it and stuff? It's so sick. Yeah. They're the best. I love those guys. I also, the set list looks insane. I know. And they're changing it up so much every night. Mm -hmm. Like, they're doing such a variety of songs, which I, I think saw, is so I rad. saw they play my, like, fave. I mean, it's hard to pick one, but... Um, the song Summertime Yeah Off Danger Days mm -hmm. Is like Top five of My favorite songs ever made I always thought Danger Days Was Because I love that album Through and Same. through I it slept on I Yes I was about to say that I yeah. always thought that Like I don't know if it's Because it was such a Change from like Black Parade or not But I thought that was Such a fun Just cool rock album You know in Summertime um, It says you can run away With me anytime you want mm -hmm. That's like the hook Um I was such a fan. So his his wife, Lindsay, Lindsay Way was in um, MSI, Mindless Self. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. She played bass, and they were on tour opening for uh, My Cam, I believe, in like the 2006 or something. And she wrote on her arm in like Sharpie one night, uh, "Run away with me." So then the next night, he wrote on his neck, "Anytime you want." So it's crazy that like 10 years later, he made a song. It's foreshadowing that. the song. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, that was before they were married. It's like a super like beautiful love story is what I'm oh, saying. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's Yeah, sick. that was like they like started dating on the tour and there's photos of that. So then like 10 years later, whatever, on Danger Days, he put like that whole concept into a song. You know, they must have been sitting on that. Once they fell in love, he was like, I got to use this thing. This yeah, is too good I, not to I use. I read that on like Genius or whatever and like almost cried. <laughs> So what else you got planned coming up? <laughs> um, now that we've wrapped up with the Gerard. Now Rado that I got story. the Mike Chem trivia down, um, I'm finishing this project. Uh, I'll hopefully tour in the fall. I really, really want to get back on the road. Um, yeah, because you played a couple shows last year, but I think a few of them had to get canceled yeah, unexpectedly. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah, it was annoying. COVID still and whatnot. Um, but also, I haven't wanted to go back on the road till this music's done. Yeah. Because I just wanted to kind of earn it. Like, I didn't want to be out traveling and then be like, oh, but I don't really know what my next moves are. You know, and I, I like to plan everything from, like, I just don't want to be like, well, here's a song, but I'm going to finish the rest after. So um, I've just been really dialed in. I'm in the studio every day because I have a studio in my apartment, too. So if I'm not in an actual studio or working with people, you're at home. I'm just at home working. So um, I'm almost done. And then... Then it's go time. That's good. Well, I, I have everything figured out. I have my album title. I have pretty much the final track list almost. Everything is locked. So that guy's getting ready to go. And to be fair, though, even during the pandemic, like you released so much new stuff that you <coughs> probably haven't had a chance to play live. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, you, I've you never got, got to, to play like the Don't Forget Where You Came From mixtape now. Yeah. Or Except even for in nostalgia. the fall. Nostalgia Kills, yeah. That was what the tour I did. So that, that was really fun. I, I got to play, you know, at least quite a few songs off that but i think the the latest track that you were at least a part of was rest in pieces mm -hmm. which was such sick. a pop punk vibe to it yeah so that song was was sick the video's out for that as well yeah shout out kelsey carter yeah kelsey carter that's right <laughs> i'd never met her before i've actually met her twice no three times now I met her the day we did the song, then I met her the day we shot the video, and then I met her when we went to K Rock and did an interview. And that's so it. it's all just specifically just been work. for this song too. Yeah. And it's the only time you've met her is and in then the next time I meet her, I'm gonna perform it with her next week. I'm like, we should get lunch or something. Like, <laughs> we, we should actually just, hang out, <laughs> and just get to know each other, just not doing this thing. Yeah, but I love that song. 
Yeah, I think that's I actually, but great. We, we were speaking before the cameras were on about Lil Lotus. He's one of my best friends, and I actually brought him to the studio to help me, because um, that's actually one of the when I when I was growing up, I was like obsessed with punk stuff and screaming and stuff, but I never screamed on a song. So Rest in Peace is actually the first song I scream on. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's yeah. that's awesome. I thought that track was great, and I'm excited thank to thank hear you. new stuff from you. I know the new track did just drop. What do Which, I do is out now. Yeah, what do I do? So excited. What do I do? What do I do? Um, please go listen. I'm really excited about this song, yeah. Yeah. And 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 for everything else that's come, this is just really like opening the door of um, you know, everything that I've been making and it's all at a really good place. And a lot of it's um pretty acoustic based. And uh it's just cool. I just feel like it's really my like authentic self. Um not that, you know, everything else wasn't before, but it's just exactly what i'd want my debut album 10 years in to, to be. be and i'm sure the more and more you do this you find you refine things of you course. find out what you're most comfortable with who you really are yeah and it sounds like within the past year or so you're pretty stoked with the the stuff that you've been able to create and that yeah. you've been working on yeah that's cool man you're living your dream out here you're doing yeah. cool stuff you're making awesome music working with such good names and yeah. I'm happy that all my friends, everyone that I know in the music world, which was so impacted by COVID, I'm so glad that for most people, it seems like they took it as an opportunity to put out some new material. Yeah. And now's the time to show it to the world and hit the road and play it. Of course. It. Yeah. I can't wait to get back and travel and play shows and keep dropping music. Hopefully, What Do I Do becomes a big smash and I could play shows forever. Yeah. Oh, you will. <laughs> Come on. You're headed that way. But thanks for chatting, dude. Anything else uh, you want to cover in particular? You feel like we covered plenty? Plenty, yeah. Yeah. Goody Grace, thank you for having me. What Do I Do is out now. What Do I Do? Check it out by Goody Grace. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks, man. <clears throat>